Hey guys, Crypto Daisy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Behind me is my telescope and my astrophotography camera. And the goal for tonight is to take pictures of the comet that it has been currently like completely overwhelming my Facebook feed. And so I thought like I need to take a picture of that comet. And so here I am with my telescope. I have um, a, a luminance filter, no light pollution filter in there because comets don't like light pollution filters. And I am in Tokyo. So there's a lot of light pollution. I didn't even try for the comet up to now simply because I thought there would be no chance for me to image it from the city, from Tokyo, from this huge amount of light pollution. But, you know, hold my beer. <laughs> I will want to try this. And so I've currently input manually the coordinates for the current location of the comet. And what I'm going to do is simply uh, try to take pictures uh, of it, maybe 30 second exposures, a lot in a row. And I need to be quick because tonight it's going to get cloudy soon and tomorrow it's going to actually snow here in Tokyo or so I'm told. We'll see. So I really need to um, to take care of my telescope to make sure it doesn't get uh, snowed upon <laughs> because it got rained upon recently. So let's see what I can accomplish. And would you look at this? This is an exposure that I just took of 30 seconds long of the uh, comet. And it's here. We can actually see the, the nebulosity from the comet. I'm also freezing my fingers off in this wind. I really should have brought gloves, but this is super cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically use the Nina sequencer there that lets me tell um, this software here, which is connected to my telescope that you saw earlier. I'm going to tell it to take like maybe one hour worth of exposures on the on the comet and then we're going to try to stack that and by stacking i hope to be able to increase my signal to noise ratio so that the um, the, the nebulosity the the tail of the comet becomes more and more visible so we'll see what happens when i actually uh do that hopefully it will actually you know <laughs> get me some results it's going to be very interesting to see uh so let me do that and i'll be back with you Phew, and it uh, was cold outside, we're back inside. And uh, just for information, this is the website that I was using to get the current comet uh, coordinates. So this is the comet E3ZTF. All of those letters and numbers mean something. I just don't know what right now. Uh, but yeah, I do love comet uh, naming. And those coordinates, you can input them in Nina. If you go to the framing assistant, you have the ability to put in manually your RA and deck. There's other ways you can do it. You can do it directly in the sequencer uh, with the uh, the uh, RA and, uh, and deck in here. Uh, but what I did is just framing assistant, put in the coordinates, then uh, add target to sequence, and it automatically put the uh, the item here. So that was you know fairly easy. The next part is processing in PixInsight. And the first step that I'm going to do is some weighted batch pre-processing. So what I want to do is to basically calibrate and debayer the frames first. And um, I don't want to stack yet because um, I don't want to include images with clouds. And I know that there were uh, clouds in the forecast. And so I'm pretty sure that some images are probably bad. And so what I did is I have my usual master bias. I have my light frames for the L filter on my hyperstar telescope, which I took via the Mina flat wizard. And I have my lights from the comet that I, um, that I put in using the buttons at the bottom here. And what I'm doing is I'm uh, unchecking everything here because I just want to dip, to uh, calibrate and debayer those frames. And I'll be able to just like remove the frames that I don't think work um, afterwards. So under calibration, let me check that I do have separate CFS scaling, flat scaling uh, factors. We're good, and I'm just going to save that in the uh, comet uh, directory. So let's run this, and I'll be back once it's done. And we are done. And the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to blink. I'm going to blink through the images. So I can uh, select my processed images, and that would be the debayered um, images here. So I'll select all of them. Okie doke, and we can look through the images. At least I can see the comet. This is uh, good news. And I'm just going to go through the images one by one and remove the images that don't seem uh, correct. 
oh, and I was right to blink through because you can see towards the end here. So maybe from, let's say, yeah, this image here. So at 9.35 p.m., then suddenly we start getting like very bright images. These are clouds passing through. And so I will want to just remove those images. And so that means what from, I was saying 35, 24. So I'll just go in File Explorer and completely delete those images. Uh, and so here we are, 935 forward, select all, shift, delete, and they're gone. Okay, so now we've uh, clarified a bit our data. I'm going to go back, hopefully, to the weighted batch pre-processing. And now that I'm back in batch pre-processing, I am just going to, um, well, we're not going to do any calibration, right? So I'm going to replace the lights with the debayered frames. So I'm going to clear all of them and add back the debayered uh, frames. Okie doke. So we're back. We have less than 200 frames now. Uh, those images are not CFA images. And we do not apply dark or flat or bias, actually. So I'm just also going to remove the bias. Uh, the batch pre-processing script is not meant to be used this way. So now I think uh, it's just going to do image registration that I have checked here and image integration, which is uh, what I want to happen. So the images are not CFA. We don't do dark flat ca uh, calibration. Just in case, I'm going to also remove everything from the flat folder. So we just have the lights. They're the Bayard. They're not CFA images. And we're just going to run this. Hopefully, it's going to work. I haven't really done that in the past before. And we're done with the uh, registration of the frames and the stacking. So now I can open my image and see what it looks like. It's funny, the rejection algorithm actually rejected the comment. <laughs> but that's not a big problem since anyway, this main image will be used to um, um, let me do unlink stretched on this, but it will be used only to get the stars. So I don't really care about the comet, but it's just very interesting to see that the comet itself was rejected, which means that in the, uh, in the script parameters, uh, we should in theory change, um, that if we're just going to, uh, to look at a, a blurred comet. This is kind of funny. We can see the ghost of the comet on the main image here, but that's not a big deal. I'm just going to um, iconize, like just rename this image. Uh, we're going to call it stacked stars. Here we are. Here we are. And I'm going to let it be for now. My next step is I want to get all of the, um, the Baird registered frames, and I am going to uh, apply the star exterminator to it or starnet plus plus so if you're using starnet um what you want to do is uh have open an image container so to do that you right click on the workspace you click on image con container and then you can select all of your files to input in there so just like select everything and and uh, and open and put them in the container and then if you have a process like uh, starnet or anything else you want to apply that process to all of the images you'll drag the triangle to the bar at the bottom of the process that you want to apply everything to before you do that you want to specify an output directory now because i'm going to be using starnet uh, no uh, star exterminator um, it already has a batch uh, system here. So I am going to select uh, the uh, batch. I do not need the star files. I do not need to unscreen the stars. I just want to uh, output the star list files and maybe unscreen. We'll see. And then I can select input files. And so now I want to go into my comment registered images and I'm going to select all of those uh, registered images that I have. So 194 files will be processed. No star images will be saved. And actually star images, the unscreen doesn't matter apparently because, okay, so we're gonna proceed and this is going to take a long time, but I have set up my computer to use CUDA uh, processing. 
So it uses my graphics card, my NVIDIA graphics card, and it is much, much faster than otherwise. But I expect it will take roughly an hour or so. So I'll see you when it's done. And the process is finished. Um, let me see what we obtained. Oh, did I put it in the same folder? Yes, apparently. I should have created a separate folder. But I think, yes, all of those are starless pictures. So I'm going to pick a random one, look at how it looks like. Yes, and we do have the comet there. So now that I, what I want to do is comet alignment. And comet alignment will be adding the files. So we want to add only the um, starless files. So those will be the files. There we are. And then, once the uh, data is loaded, I want to double click the first file. Oops, this one. Ah, uh, no, wrong. Okay. Uh, apply the STF. There we go. And I want to uh, select the center of the uh, comet. And there it is. And then I will want to take the last file. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Here we are. I'm going to double check the first file again. Yeah, that's fine. So then uh, we can, what can we do? We can select an output directory. So I'm going to uh, call it Comet Aligned. We're going to select this folder and apply so that now all of the frames will be uh, aligned according to the comet position itself. And the alignment is apparently done. So let's see what the result is. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the alignment actually worked. So I'm first going to go inside the uh, comet align folder. I'm going to pick, pick two random images and see whether they kind of look like they are aligned on one another, just to be sure. Okay, and yes, they look aligned. Awesome, excellent, excellent. So the next step will be to do an integration. So for that, we're going to go to all processes. I'm going to go to um, image integration, and I am going to add the files from the comet alignment area there. So I'm going to open this and we'll want an average combination, but no normalizations and no weights whatsoever. And I don't want to do signal and noise evaluation. I don't want to do rejection either. And I'm going to just press the apply button. And now it is going to run through the integration, which is another time of weight and drinking coffee. So. <laughs> Or tea from tea. Uh, but with that, uh, let's uh, let's wait until it's done and I'll see you then. Now for the rest of the processing, uh, I originally did the full processing and I was really making a lot of mistakes, a lot of back and forth. And I've noticed that there is an awesome processing video that's been published by Sean from uh, Visible Dark. And I'll put the link down in the description so you can check it out because it really is so much better than what I'm doing here. And so for this particular video, I'll just go through uh, the steps that I used in general. Uh, my uh, full processing video, I'll uh, make it available to my Patreon supporters so they can see me fumbling around in the dark, not knowing at all what I should be doing. It's uh, going to be a lot of fun, uh, but enjoy this part here. So. What I did overall, uh, once I had stacked everything, I ended up with two images, one with the the, the um, alignment done on the stars and the stacked version here, and the other one, the image of the comet that's aligned on the comet itself, as you can see here. So there was a lot of noise on the comet, and also at first it, ap it appeared like that it had lost its green color, but that was because of the uh, the background extraction hadn't been done yet. So after I did an automated and dynamic background extraction, this is what we obtained. And uh, after that, I ended up first uh, doing a crop, then uh, a stretch, then uh, blurring the heck out of things with noise exterminator to try to reduce this walking noise there. 
Um, I think like I, I could have stacked um, or done the star removal better. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where I went wrong to get this uh, this walking noise, uh, but it's definitely from the rem remnants of stars after the uh, star removal in each of the individual subframes. Um, and I kept going and going and finally a curve transformation. So that, that was really like the simple uh, process where you have the, uh, the image that gets ABE and DBE. We crop it, we stretch it, we uh, remove the noise and do some curves and that's it. Right, and then on the other front we have the image with the stars here. So what did I do on this image? Well, something very, very similar at first. So um, did uh, an automated background extraction. I, I first cropped actually. I cropped at exactly the same with the same exactly same uh, crop as the comet image um, using dynamic crop, and then I. Um, I removed the background via automatic automatic background extraction, then some more via dynamic background extraction, um, and after that I uh, stretched the uh, the image. And once the image was stretched, I was able to simply remove the stars. And while removing the stars, it gave me a star image to uh, play with, which is here. So then my only next step was to add the stars back to the starless image using pixel, uh, pixel, pixel mass. The formula is there. I have shown this formula in other videos as well. And I added after adding back the stars with that pixel mass formula, I had both images on the left and the right. The right is more aggressively stretched, but then the, the walking noise is more obvious. The left one is less aggressively stretched, but less punchy. So it's all a matter of preference. And those are the images that I obtained. They're not perfect by a long shot, but they're from Tokyo. And I think that's really, really cool to be able to take such images from Tokyo. And this is how I got this comet image from Tokyo. I mean, Tokyo, right? It's a really, really difficult place to do astrophotography in. And I'm really happy that with just uh, a couple of hours of, um, of integration, maybe even less, I managed to get this image, it, which is pretty decent. There is like, there are defects in the image. The processing that I presented was really seat of my pants type of processing because I've never done uh, comet processing before, but I did manage, I think, to get uh, something decent. And, you know, uh, the comet is still there. Uh, it's still available in February. So even if you're in a big city, maybe you might want to try it out. And the uh, process is not that complex. It's really about uh, finding the coordinates from a website. I'll put the link down in the description below. And then, you know, taking your exposures and the processing is, a, is the difficult part. Uh, but uh, you could tell that I wasn't very proficient with the processing either. But even though I think I managed to get a decent uh, image out of all of this. Um, and with that, I will leave you with the final image. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you wish to support me, please feel free to click the like button to leave a comment down below to subscribe to the channel. All of this really helps the channel out. If you really want to support me, there's always Patreon, link in the description. But with that, as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.